Welcome, my friends. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us on this very special Sunday Worldwide Broadcast. We are live for the next two hours here as we are every Sunday. It's the 22nd day of May. Stalin famously said that if one man dies, it's a tragedy. If 10,000 die, it's a statistic. And a lot of times when I talk about my personal experiences studying the globalist operation and opposing it, it's not in some gonzo journalistic fashion that I'm trying to insert myself into the narrative, but that's the only way I've got to basically describe to people what I personally have internalized that I'm trying to externalize. And when I personally am just at home with my family or exercising or reading a book or driving in my car, I'm a very Zen person. My thoughts are completely clear, they're ordered, they're super complex. And then I get here and you know, try to look at hundreds of news articles and dozens of video clips and it just, it just uh, really sometimes, I think sidetracks me, but I don't know how to deal with that to where I don't get caught up in the minutia of the news, but still cover it all, but also get into the big themes of what we're dealing with as a civilization. But today, we're gonna to cover a lot of breaking news, obviously, and we have Joel Skousen joining us in the second hour. But I really want today to talk about the nature of the new world order, the nature of humanity, from my perspective, and the fact that they're not invincible and that evil always thinks that it can't be stopped until humanity understands that we don't have any choice but to resist it. And the social engineers have cheated humanity to be in control. And they are envious of freedom and intellect and competition. And they are at their base very, very evil. Elijah Wood, you know, the huge actor, has come out and said Hollywood's basically run by people like Jimmy Savelle, the child kidnapper murderer that hangs out with the royal family in England, and the prime ministers and the rest of it. And, and, and again, that's just one sign of the underbelly of what's going on in all of this. We have really bad people in control who have very twisted visions of the world and want us to just be these unthinking automatons that follow their stimuli. And they're so arrogant, they think that we just don't even count. And so much of humanity is in a trance, has been put into a trance, and is just half dead, shuffling around, just waiting to, be, to, to die, and I guess be dumped into some hell. Well, here's the issue. I don't see this planet as purgatory. But it is a launch pad into the heavens, whether you look at that metaphysically or technologically. It is a big old launch pad. And we'll look back on this planet in the future, like looking back and going in and having Sunday brunch at grandma's house. But we've got to make it past this next hurdle. And there are people that want to stop that. And it really does come down to that in this universe. Those that have goodwill, those that have bad will. And I really want to put the minions of the system on notice when we come back. You already have an idea of the fact that you're going to be betrayed. That's why you enjoy playing like you're the boss and betraying others below you. But you're coming to the end of the game here, and you can't kick the can down the road. It's, it's really sad to see people out there uncloaking themselves and showing which side they're really on. We're going to focus a lot on the way they're bringing censorship to the United States through Facebook. And the next wave of suppression that Supreme Court Justice warned Matt Drudge of last year, because it's now here. Great honor of the experience that our species has gone through and the shared knowledge. We're being robbed of our birthright right now, but I want the globalist social engineers to understand that they will be betrayed. And that they will not be the transcendent superhumans they claim they'll be by robbing humanity of its birthright and trying to dumb down the whole of the population, cut off the resources, and stop human expansion. A truly enlightened elite would not keep the general public in the dark. 
and would not try to reduce the general population to that of servile, brain-damaged slaves. There's a lot I want to cover today, obviously. But the first thing I want to do is just take a case point example as best I can that is a key to open a door to understand how our civilization has been controlled. There is false opposition in this country and every other major nation that is controlled by the three different power syndicates. And what happens immediately when opposition rises to this larger global plan, power brokers from the Chinese complex, the Russian complex, and the Anglo-American complex that is the dominant complex. It's got about 80% of the power right now. It's about to take out the others. This is the most ruthless and fourth dimensional in warfare. They go and they basically intimidate, they buy off, they infiltrate, they scare, they death threat people until they join them. But in many cases, they take social climbers who they know can be puppets, marionettes, and, and they put them forward to lead the opposition so the opposition can be hamstrung and defeated. I want to be clear. When I criticize Glenn Beck here on air, it is not because he's a popular talk show host and has made hundreds of millions of dollars. It's not because of his success. I criticize him because he obviously knows the truth of what's going on and has covered a lot of issues and done some good, but then only to have control of the opposition to betray it at critical junctures. And Glenn Beck at some point may have been a good person. I can't judge him, only God can do that. But. He is a perfect case point example of what we don't want to be. And folks asked me a few weeks ago, Drudge linked to it, a bunch of newspapers linked to it. It got millions and millions of views. Just a clip from the show where I, I, I talked about Glenn Beck being the modern Benedict Arnold for what he was doing with Ted Cruz and saying folks are going to hell if you don't you know, vote for Ted Cruz. I said, you know, a lot of things that need to be said there, but... People ask why I, I actually started crying and, and, and not sobbing on air. I uncontrollably had tears running down my face. Because when you see a Judas Iscariot tarot card, an archetype, when you actually see Judas Iscariot in the modern world, a true Benedict Arnold, And just the spirit of deception and true manifest evil. It's very painful. And when I talk about Glenn Beck, it, I talk about him because he is a very evil person. Very evil. And now you see him destroying himself, his so-called empire collapsing. As he grasps a hold of the power structure... And says, oh, I've got the person of American Idol coming to work for me and the guy that did Oreo cookies. And you know, just burrowing himself deeper and then going to this Zuckerberg meeting. When Zuckerberg is an admitted CIA front guy for a giant data tracking control grid that put Obama into office. I'm going to show you the news articles here in our Facebook file here in a moment. If you're a TV viewer, I'll read them for radio listeners. That is admittedly the number one contributor to Hillary Clinton. And this guy's putting statements out like they're good liberals over at Facebook, not progressives. I mean, now he's telling you that Zuckerberg is good so that he'll get promoted on Facebook. That's like a third of the Internet now. You got Google hanging out at the White House, basically running things. It can predict the future now in mass movements. No one of the politicians are arrogant and out of control. And then you've got this guy fawning at their feet, and still a lot of people can't see it. So it's bigger than Glenn Beck. I, I, I want to make that clear. Glenn Beck is just a symbol of deception. Because it's one thing if you're a Rachel Maddow, or it's one thing if you're a Hillary Clinton, 
working for the globalist, openly selling evil, breaking up the family, destroying our sovereignty, coming after our right to self-defense, uh, attacking manhood, trying to sexualize children, all the wicked things they do to, to, to create a bunch of zombies, a bunch of slaves. These are, these are spiritual slave masters. They, they trade in the men's souls, as Revelation talks about. But to see someone go into that position, be made the, quote, leader of the liberty movement by the media, and then to watch them creep around and betray everybody at every chance and to see the wolf-like stalking, I mean, it's, it's just flagrant, naked, Judas Iscariot. And then I knew when he was going to meet Zuckerberg a week ago, I said, watch. He's going to come out and say there's no censorship. There are a lot of right-wing groups need, need to be controlled. There are wonderful people over at Facebook. And sure enough, sure enough, that's what he did. You know, first Tucker Carlson was in the meeting. And he came out and said, you know, Glenn Beck was groveling, wanted to be a manservant of Zuckerberg, totally just auditioning and, 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 and groveling. Others refused to go that were asked to go because obviously it's just to be a, a prop. But see, Beck can't even see that. And so like a rat leaving a sinking ship, he's scurrying into the arms of Zuckerberg, who, who, who just is the very vision of a vampire. We can put a photo of him up. I mean, not just the giant canine teeth, the psycho eyes. All You can look at him and see an evil that may rival Beck's. Look at Hillary. These are, these are monsters. Zuckerberg that calls his users dumb efforts. Zuckerberg that, that, that meets with the communist Chinese and helps them censor and they help him censor and is meeting with the White House and now rolling out the idea with the media going, it's okay for them to censor. It's their platform. Good censor people. And their own employees come out and say, no, we censor election information, veterans information, anything. It's totally controlled. We, we censor people's individual pages. Well, that's already been known, but now there's a Senate investigation, and it all turns into Beck going and saying, no, conservatives, there's not censorship happening. Everything's fine. Zuckerberg's a good liberal. They're good people at Facebook. Former Facebook workers, we routinely suppress conservative news. Folks, it's beyond conservative news. It's gardening. It's organic news. It's, it's non-GMO news. It's anything pro-human. They just say, oh, it's conservatives. The liberals go, oh, good, censor that. But next, it's everything. And this is how they roll it out in this country. This is how they do it. And I, I've got a clip of this coming up. But, but just you need to understand when you see this, what this is. They're openly announcing world government. They're bringing in a global cashless society. They're cutting off the resources. They're doing everything they said they would in their white papers written 30, 40 years ago, and they're doing it. And the point is, where we're going is a place like hell on earth. The globalists have bad intents for everybody. This whole political system claims it's gonna empower you, but every metric, every measurement, every statistic shows humanity is disintegrating into ignorance, into deformity, into stupid, backwards, petty, divide and conquer trash. All right, there is a lot of news I'm going to get to. Joel Skousen, who's a great sage when it comes to geopolitics and what's happening, will be joining us in the second hour. We'll open the phones up in the last 30 minutes of the transmission as well. But here's what I want to get at. I've talked a lot about this the last two months. The Associated Press had a big poll, scientific poll, and found that 6% of the American people, was it 20-something thousand they interviewed, trusted mainstream media. And parallel university studies show that around 70% of people trust the Internet. And by that, they don't trust everything they see, but they trust the general opinion of the public or video of the public shot or random musings or, or reviews, you know, of restaurants, whatever. Crowdsourcing, crowd, crowd judgment. They trust that a lot more than they trust mainstream media. So when you see the incredible arrogance of the Pope saying, Europe shouldn't have Christian roots. Christianity isn't good. Uh, these are quotes. Um, Jesus was like ISIS. Remember that last week in LaCroix newspaper, big Catholic paper? When you see stuff like that, or you see Obama saying you didn't build your business, it's meant to be over the top to normalize crazy tyranny. That's a desperation tactic to get your normalcy bias so high 
that they can get away with anything. I mean, if they can get you to let, teach your five-year-olds what sex they should be or they shouldn't be any sex, you let the school engage in pedophile training. That's what it is. Then you'll put up with anything. If they can come and take your children's minds, they can do anything. So the SEC has come out, as Drudge visited us last year and warned us, and called for censoring all political information and ideas on the Internet and taxing you and not letting you actually have it. And they're arresting filmmakers and people across the country. They're indicting conservative governors. I mean, they're moving. Here's the Daily Beast. First came the Drudge Link, then the death threats. Oh, oh, she just, Ann Ravel was relatively unknown government official. Not a servant, but an official. Until her words got featured on the Drudge Report soon, the trolls, see the bad people, were screaming at her to drop dead. In October 2014, the Federal Election Commission Vice Chairwoman, Ann Ravel, did what she does best, speak her mind about political campaign issues. And she went on to say, we should register and restrict political talk, starting with the Drudge Report, and not allow it to even link to news articles. And it goes on to admit it there. Now, here it is. FEC Dems would ban Drudge, New York Times, free media on election eve. FEC chair once warns the conservative media like Drudge Report and Sean Hannity face regulation. See, and, and, and they've done this before with the Fairness Doctrine on talk radio that finally got overturned by Bruce Fine, who was the head lawyer for the FEC or the FCC at the time, was able to get that removed. But they want to bring this back because no matter how fancy their sets, no matter how much money they spend on MSNBC and CNN, their top shows have a half million viewers now. Big radio shows in New York City have more on one affiliate than that. We have rated on our close to 200 affiliates 470-something thousand people every 15 minutes. It was 300-something thousand. I mean, in the aggregate, every hour, there's over 800,000 people that are tuning in. That's on AM and FM stations. Five million YouTube views a day on our platforms. Millions a day on, I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna keep going here. The point is these people are in their own world and they wanna keep you in their little fantasy land. But they know fantasy land's dead. They're leaving it up as a facade Hoping and dreaming that if they can censor the internet and censor you and censor the news you spread, but also shut down the main capital ships, the mother ships like DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com, WorldNetDaily.com, DailyCaller.com, Breitbart.com. None of us are perfect and have all the answers. The point is, though, that's, that's what they openly say they want to go after. If they can shut that down and then shut down grassroots, it's came over. And... One of the frequent people that Paul Watson interviews, we're going to interview her. She's a conservative, anti-third wave feminist in Canada. Facebook told her she published it. We have an Infowars.com article right now. She's coming on in a couple days. I'm going to cover this in a moment. And they told her, sorry, you're talking about Facebook censorship. It's a huge national story. Hundreds of articles a day. We're not going to allow you to share that. You're suspended. What is it, for a week? Now, we've been suspended on Facebook before for putting out a Navy SEAL meme about, you know, she didn't act and these SEALs died. Facebook bans conservatives for complaining about censorship. Social media giant back to its old ways despite much heralded meeting with conservatives. They bring in Glenn Beck. They meet with him. He comes out and says, there's no censorship. These are, quote, good liberals, not progressives. These are quotes. And everything's okay now as they have a Senate investigation of this. Zuckerberg meets with the communist Chinese leadership. He's involved in, in the number one campaign m money raiser right now for Hillary. Look it up. I have the articles right here. I'm going to go over them. And they're sitting there selling censorship. They tell you, have your Facebook, have your pictures, talk about your worldviews, whatever. Oh, you want to push carbon taxes? You want to push, you know, Heather has two mommies or whatever. You want to push whatever you want on little kids. That's fine. You want to push Black Lives Matter that says go out and kill the cops. I mean, that's what Facebook admits they give top billing to. See, it's not top news anymore that you look at. It's top trends. They create fake trends. But see, true patriots, beyond conservatism, just pro-humans, Renaissance folks, come out and we dominate Facebook. And so, 
Oh, we're getting every video on Facebook, a million views. Oh, they just put a deal on there where we can't share our video. And then have Facebook people reach out to us and say, stop doing this and we'll let your stuff get spread. See, and I respond, okay, this is an off-the-record meeting, but I'm going to go and say that you did this. I'm not going to say who did it, but, you know. Meanwhile, Beck gets invited to meet with Zuckerberg and then grovels before him. So that's why this is so... So painful. See, Beck was only given his radio show with no ratings and put up there by Clear Channel. Government sponsored, government funded, government run. Beck is the government. Beck is the Democratic Party. Beck has always been Zuckerberg's buddy. They've always been the, this, this snickering evil team. He is a narcissistic, power mad Satanist, in my view. And I don't mean he gets around black altars at night, but he's all about himself and his little power. You can see him, he's so weak. He just is, it's just, it's just incredible. Preying on people. I mean, the guy is literally so, such a predator. I, I, I mean, he looks like a serial killer. My, my cells cry out against him. Just, uh, he, he is the counterfeit. Tucker Carlson's father was the head of Voice of America. Comes from a very old, prestigious American family. That's why he was invited to the Zuckerberg. Summit. But he understands what's happening and he understands his viewers aren't going to support him either if he goes along with the New World Order. For whatever reason, Tucker Carlson has a soul and came out, even though he had to sign a non disclosure agreement, and said that uh, Glenn Beck groveled on his knees basically there at that private meeting with Zuckerberg. We're going to play the clip in a moment. We're getting him on this week. And I really like Tucker Carlson. I've met him in person. And uh, now that there's more opposition to the New World Order, he's really coming along. I'm not territorial. I want to see people dominate and take action against the globalist. I want to defeat them. So if somebody was not 100% in the past, but they're getting closer to it today, I, I, Rush Limbaugh, deep down, he's a good guy. He's a patriot. Sean Hannity, same deal. Uh, Michael Savage is coming on this week. Great guy. None of us are perfect. But they care about America. They care about humanity. They really like free market. They like prosperity. It's like Donald Trump. He just doesn't have it out for America. He likes prosperity. He cares about people. And you can read that and pick that up from him. You look at the globalist, man. They want you poor under their control. They want to dominate you. And that's why Beck's so bad. I mean, going to this meeting to be the front guy to try to tell conservatives, everything's okay, let Zuckerberg block these right-wingers. He actually came out, you can type in Glenn Beck, Zuckerberg, Glenn Beck, Facebook meeting, and he's all over putting articles out saying, yeah, there are bad people on Facebook. They're doing their job. They're not censoring. They're good liberals. So they'll then force feed him to everybody? I mean, that's his, his business plan? The globalists are all about betrayal. They're going to betray Beck. Beck betrayed himself. So again, this isn't about Glenn Beck. People are like, you know, Glenn Beck who? I, I get that. But I'm talking about him because his office is Judas Iscariot. The 30 pieces of silver. And when he finally figures that out, whether it's this year or next year or the next... Is he going to go out there and hang himself on the side of a hill and cut his guts open? I don't think so. I think he's worse than Judas Iscariot. I mean, this is the guy that claims he ran our movement and was this priest of all this stuff. And he's hanging around with Zuckerberg, who is an admitted Bilderberg attendee and an admitted globalist pushing Black Lives Matter, anti-family agenda, got Obama into office is gaming the internet, taking over the web, and is the number one contributor to Hillary, and then we're going to see this creature manifest in front of us and tell us that he's our leader. That's disgusting. I mean, we have seen persecution of Christians, libertarians, conservatives, veterans, returning veterans, gun groups, by the IRS, by the tens of thousands, arrest, persecutions, bank accounts taken. 
And MSNBC goes on TV. I played the clips. You've heard them and says, yeah, the Tea Party's racist. They deserve to be arrested. These soft, taxpayer-funded weirdos sit up there and, like, get a thrill out of, oh, we're going to arrest our opposition. They don't even put thought into that. These journalists don't even have the instinct when they sit up there and, and smirk on CNN. Dinesh D'Souza just finished his nine-month prison sentence for trying to give money in a campaign to a Senate friend. Didn't just fill out some paperwork. While Hillary gets money from dictators and $100 million from Gulf Emirate sheiks that keep women as slaves. There's an article out from the Wall Street Journal. Former White House reporter, media happy to be managed by Obama. It's the former top writers, one of the editors at the USA Today, Richard Benedito. And he says, you know, they want to lie. They, they, you get in these meetings and it's like, how do we grovel more? How do we deceive? It's, it's like Gruber. Remember when the, all those dozens of videos came out of him sitting around on C-SPAN with the professors going, this is how we lie to people. And everyone fawning about, you wrote the deception, you lied, you doubled the taxes. Oh, oh. they were just like, oh, wonderful, teach us how to lie. They're just totally sold out sociopaths and psychopaths and minions that just hop around going, gee, how do I climb the ladder? Carlson wrote notes of what Beck did in, these, in, in this, in this two-hour meeting, and it was just fawning, groveling. Colt wanted to be his man-child. But then Carlson, because of the non-disclosure, says, well, the guy that won't be named, you know, the guy that, but see, the crazy part was days after he did this, Beck put it all out himself and came out and said, yeah, we got to control dangerous right-wingers. Yeah, the, we need to censor people. Yeah, these are good liberals. We need to work with Facebook. Tucker Carlson, Glenn Beck acted like he was auditioning to be Zuckerberg's manservant. He doesn't even have the good sense to not go to a meeting like that. Or if he does, he then prostrates himself before it. And world governments out in the open, global carbon taxes that everybody's exempt except Europe and the U.S. and Canada. We're openly being screwed over. We're openly being dumbed down. We're, they're openly getting rid of cash. They're openly announcing all this tyranny. And they've just got all these legions of people that are such followers, they all just gang up because they're so weak. But that's why they want to shut down InfoWars and Talk Radio and Matt Drudge and everybody else because we just don't have it out for humanity. We just can't sleep at night if we lie to you. We just can't be traitors. And it's not like we're just against being taken over by some new better system. The globalists are horrible anti-humans. It's a society of psychopaths and their sociopath followers and their mercenary followers. And they're then below that just servants looking for power. Like moths to flame, they're attracted to Lucifer's light. And I've got all this news. I'm going to cover it when we come back and play some clips. It's just really wild to see this, and it's saddening. And I really think, is humanity that weak? Are we that broke back that we can't see what they've done to us and what they want to do to us? And they really have all these, quote, liberals that want to arrest conservatives and put us in jail and shut us up and shut down websites and, and just all of this. It's like, wow. You really are evil. But they were never brought up with any culture or any spirit. They were set in front of television sets and brought up in peer pressure and taught to be fearful and cowardly to the point of they were so desperate and so scared they would join anything that invited them to be have a seat at the table. Even if it was a seat at a banquet where they're the main dish. And they don't have souls. They're gone. They've turned themselves over to great delusion. They are just empty, shark-toothed, little piggy-eyed people.
that just boil around in their own delusion and they don't even want the birthright of true consciousness and honor. It's very sad. And I just thank God every minute that we still have free will and consciousness, at least some of us. And we know this planet is a beautiful place with a lot of great history, but the thing trying to control it is not the universe and is not God and has always tried to dominate humanity and life and has always failed in the end. And that really is the good news. They're going to fail. We're going to play the Tucker Carlson clip and come back and then I'll get into all the 2016 news, economic news. There's a lot of it. Infowars.com. Stay with us. If you study the trajectory of the global controller's system, you realize that it's taking us into a nightmare. And every fiber of your being resist it, then you can see on its face, prima facie, that it's bad for you and bad for your family. And I see all these trendies buying into the system, dressing like they're told, marrying like they're told, buying like they're told, and they're so desperate, they're so unhappy, they don't know why they're fulfilled, they follow what they're told, and it doesn't bring them to some type of nirvana, some type of heavenly Valhalla. Because if you're conscious and aware and dialed into history and the animating contest of liberty, you would see what a sick, broken joke it is and how we're being held back desperately by lesser men and women who, if humanity flowers, will be left so far behind, they will be obsolete. That's why they claim they're the guardians of the earth, the guardians of the environment, when they're the authors of the earth's peril, the vandals of the mother. That's why they claim they're the guardians of racial equality and all these other things when their real actions are destruction, civil war. Our CIA run by Rothschild intelligence, beyond British intelligence, and others, openly puts dictators in power, openly puts in regimes that create the most poor possible. It's an alien force. The American project, the new Atlantis of Sir Francis Bacon and others, was only partially realized. Only part of its booster systems launched and still took us to heights never before seen. And so you still had some of that energy, some of that spirit of innovation leading the world into the future. But America was then captured. The West was then captured and enlisted now while we're deindustrialized, while we're dumbed down, what's left of our best, our remnant, is thrown into wars, thrown into technological advances that are siphoned off to offshore combines. While we pay the bill and get the blame. I've seen their system, I understand it. These are very, very twisted people. I mean, I look at Zuckerberg and he is animated with hellish evil, cloaking himself in a non-threatening uniform, but those eyes say it all. He walks through a crowd of his employees, all wearing goggles, sitting there like slaves, typing, dying, and he walks a man in reality. They are entering his world. We can put that image up. They are coming into his planet, his vision. And all Zuckerberg is, is a front man of InQtel and the Central Intelligence Agency. And a pump and dump. And you see Glenn Beck, servile, rolling around on the ground before him like a snake. Good God. Good Lord. Deliver us from these serpents.
From birth, men are told you're a man because you play football, you're a man because you play fantasy football, you're a man because you go to the sports bar and drink and act tough. No, a man is aware of what's happening on the planet and is involved and cares about their ancestors and their future progeny and is innovating and is building. That's why men are more unfulfilled than ever. So are women because our humanity has been stolen from us. And once they sell the young people on the idea of a free lunch, once they sell the young people on the idea of just being lazy and you get ahead caring about nobody but yourself, the truth is you don't even care about yourself then. You can't care about yourself till you care about others, till you have empathy. But to the psychopath and the sociopath, empathy is a weakness, not a transcendental doorway into perception. Look at these articles. Venezuela, this is AFP. Venezuela, where a hamburger is officially $170. That's what communism brings you. But before I go there, I want to play this Tucker Carlson clip because I mentioned it, where he's talking about this meeting with Zuckerberg. And notice the story changes from hundreds of employees of Facebook go to the Senate and say they're censoring, like China, individual users and political parties and organizations and it's total control and they're very concerned and then then it just turns into Glenn Beck says it's all nice and they're not, no, they're helping. Good Lord. I mean, what happens next? And it's the nakedness of it, how they parade in front of all of us and rub our faces in it. I mean, I read newspaper headlines from mainstream newspapers last Friday where it was telling, it was all over the country. They were, you know, it's a talking point. Okay, now let's test this. They say, it's now time to teach your sixth grade girls. Now that boys are going to be in the showers, we're going to integrate the boys and girls rooms together is the next phase. So girls, get don't be repulsed by male genitals. I mean, that sounds like a joke written in some science fiction comedy book, but it's real. And you're like, but it's so stupid. What, what, how is that our culture? Because it's just meant to make you fight over that well, they're jacking your food and water with all sorts of poisons and writing 1,100 page PhD textbooks. And yeah, there it is. Girls must get rid of their discomfort at seeing male genitals in locker rooms. Charlotte Observer. They just want you to be so malfunctioning, so hamstrung, so, so crippled mentally that you never figure out you were given a worthless degree at college. You never figure out you were screwed over. You never figured out you were hit with chemical weapons to make you a eunuch, basically. I mean, you go out and look at the public. The elite take pleasure in this. I don't. They are walking dead. Their souls have been sucked out. They're dead. Let's go ahead and play this uh, clip of Tucker Carlson. Go ahead. We talked to them. I talk to them about the people who work there and if everyone in your office has the same background and the same cultural assumptions it's going to affect your news coverage and they seem to think that was reasonable some of the conservatives there asked tough questions others sucked up basically like who you know well-known talk show host who you think would be asking tough questions who? but have said things like you're such an innovator you're such an impressive guy no, who said that ah, come on you know you can imagine but the point is they are conducting an investigation. They don't want to be seen as biased. Of course, their subjective judgments. So, are they going to change anything? Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to try to move as much as they can over to the algorithm and take the human element out to the extent possible. But I think, you know, in did the end, there's always going to be Did he admit to it? Because the curators judgment. no, came they out did and not said admit that intentional bias occurred. They did admit that Silicon Valley is very liberal, and the people who work there, by definition, are probably mostly liberal. And I said, well, why don't you hire a bunch of Mormons? You know, like make it. You bring people in with a different cultural background, and you will get a greater diversity of views, said. and you'll make wiser decisions. And they said, no, it's a pretty good idea. I don't know if they'll do it. Right, they never thought of that. And we should have other people than liberals there. The other thing, the big story is these curators were told, they said they were told to rip out some of these oh, stories. That's enough. Right. And, and he says more in, in articles he did. They're up on drugsreport.com, infowars.com, you name it. But, but listen, 
This is how they whitewash total censorship coming into play. They shut your site down. They ban it the third time when they say, don't link even to a Washington Post article about how we're censoring or we're going to take you down. And you just sit there like we're in Communist China and go, yes, I'll stop. Sorry, don't ban me off here. When you are what make Facebook what it is. It's incredible. And they just sell it like, oh, it's just a new thing, like the NSA spying or coming after our guns or whatever it is. Infowars.com is where the resistance to tyranny begins. I'm Alex Jones, second hour coming up. They got 50% off running until the end of the night on Hillary for President Church, by the way. We are in FEMA Region 6, where I broadcast from. We, we are already an occupied country by the globalists. They're trying to mop up resistance, break up the families, shut off our industry, shut off our power plants, and make us dependent. And then they write textbooks admitting that. And we write articles about those textbooks. We, we make films. That's why so much of what we talked about has now come true. By the way, we're not happy when it comes true. We're trying to say, here's their plan. They've gotten so much of this already done. You don't want to go here, 80% population reduction. Bare minimum. At the public numbers, 80%. Deeper white papers, 90%. And then we have intel from higher up that it goes up to like 99%. But, and I've had the different genetic engineers threaten us, send us letters, have lawyers call us. Some of the acolytes of... Uh, a man who's pledged himself to Lucifer on the uh, UT website. It's in my film Endgame. The UT professor that came out and said he wants airborne Ebola to be released to kill 90% of the world's population, Mr. Pianca. And then I had his students threaten me. And then I, some of them sent me emails and said, don't show me in that photo with him and Things like that. And I went and looked them up, and they were graduated five years ago, five years before that, and they were involved in BioShield, bioweapons development, sending us emails and their lawyers sending us letters. This is 10 years ago, nine years ago, saying Dr. Pianca is too liberal, only wanting 90%. The earth will be free once the human parasite is eradicated. Humanity must be expunged. We're reading that letter on air. And I went to the bioweapon site. Disguised as a biodefense system. $100 billion the last 15 years spent on it publicly. And she was in that white lab coat with all those big centrifuges and machines behind her. And she had a crazed look in her eye and I knew that look. Selling the baby parts. They're, they're, now they got articles every day about the chimeras, the part human, part animal creatures that don't have any rights, that they won't show us yet. They're soon going to start showing them on the news. And they'll have trendies on MTV make fun of the horrible mutants. But then they'll cut to a commercial saying, brought to you by this hair care product that's testing free on bunnies. It's all part of sick jokes. There's human chimeras in miserable pain in tanks. Part human, part fish, you name it, gulping, begging. I've interviewed those genetic engineers that have witnessed it. But it's okay, we're nice to the bunnies. <laughs> and you want me to sign on to that? No, thank you. There's no choice. My soul scrabbles. Like a litter of dogs that didn't come out right, where they put them in a cage and lower them into the cow pond, and they fight and struggle right up there to, the, to get that air to the last minute. That's how people get rid of the dogs, you know, breeders. That's how they do it. There's some sick enjoyment in it, I guess. I don't get any sick enjoyment watching humanity struggle on its knees. And I've prayed before the maker. Because I'm weak, I'm twisted, I'm bad, I, I, I'm full of sin. But I love God and I love justice and I love free will. So just let God's spirit shine through this country and this world and turn this tide of evil. But I don't know if that'll happen. 
All I know is, is that the flesh can die. The soul goes on. And this is a test. Life on this planet. And I've seen beyond the New World Order. I've seen beyond all their lies. And I know beyond that is the heavens and the creator of it all. You've got to ask God to come into your heart and transcend that evil. Everyone can feel and see that's halfway awake. The energy level of the planet rising. And we're seeing the enemy uncloak itself on every front. We're finding out who's good and who's bad right now. It is an epic time to be alive. Now, our guest, Joel Skousen, has headed up some of the biggest conservative organizations in the country. He helped lead uh, one of the attempts back in the 80s and 90s to wrest control from the neocons and the rhinos and the cuckold Republicans and the rest of it. His uncle, Cleon Skousen, was mayor of Salt Lake and a big patriot and wrote best-selling New York Times number one bestsellers about naked communism, the naked capitalists, and the rest of it. How ultra-rich elites funded socialism and communism to have consolidated control. And then, of course, Quigley, decades later, wrote a book basically admitting it all. But Skousen on his own right, former Marine Corps officer and fighter-bomber pilot in the Vietnam era, himself with the World Affairs Brief, has just done such a great job I think it was with his discernment, time and time again, being right about what was happening in the world and trying to gauge what's going forward in the future. But everyone must understand, I don't sit here and get mad at, say, Michael Savage because he's got 400 affiliates and I've got 180 affiliates. Say, he's coming on next week, by the way. Because he has goodwill, wants humanity to survive, be successful. I'm not in competition with Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity. When I attack Glenn Beck, it's because he has a very special office of deception and of attacking Ron Paul early on, you know, eight years ago, and of key points, saying good things, but then flipping. And now going and meeting with Zuckerberg and groveling and coming out and saying, you know, I think these are good liberals at Facebook and we need to censor these other conservatives. This is the mainlining of censorship in America. What Matt Drudge was warned about by the other conservative justice that isn't dead yet. So here's what I'm here to tell you. The enemy is moving. Everyone knows that. But so is the Spirit of the Lord. Because when the enemy comes like in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. I don't sit there and give you Bible verses because I want to manipulate you like Glenn Beck does to your Christian roots. I say it because it comes right out of me because it's the truth. And I don't claim to be some high priest or have all the answers. I simply know my soul's pointed towards God, not towards the devil. But my flesh is pointed at the devil. And that's why I'm ashamed of myself. Now there's a big difference between that and these people that claim you're there to basically follow their every whim and they have the answers. You need to think for yourself and follow your own discernment, but we have a 6% trust rate in the media and AP polls. We have the system collapsing. A major time of change is upon us. And Joel Scalz is with us for the balance of the hour. He's going to come on in the next week for a full hour, maybe longer, and take calls. But I, 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 I'm not here to attack Glenn Beck. I'm talking about his office. I think we can fairly say he is the Judas goat. He is a prototype of that. And his collapse and now his fawning to Zuckerberg, who they admit put Obama in, is a Bilderberg Group member, CIA run on record, total dark side, and now the number one contributor to Hillary, and this guy's telling us that we need to bow down to Zuckerberg and internet censorship. It really heralds a key time for everyone. So, so here's what I'm asking before we go to break in about five, six minutes. We'll come back and get into geopolitics and what's happening in Venezuela and other key points that you're covering at world, worldaffairsbrief.com. But Joel Skousen, where are we in your view historically? Because not just at a news level, in my gut, I just feel the energy level reaching an electric firestorm point, And it only seems to be cascading. Do you think I'm wrong? Or where are we historical? And what do all these movements signify? And what does the apparent weakness of the enemy signify? Because I know they're not weak. But, but uh, still, it's just we're seeing amazing things happen. 
Well, Alex, it's good to be with you again. Um, I think my analysis is that we are at a significant turning point that we have never before seen in the history of conservatism in the United States. In other words, the conspiracy of, of globalism and to denigrate sovereignty and masquerading as both liberals and conservatives, uh, controlling both political parties, has been very, very sophisticated. And ever since I was chairman of the Conservative National Committee in the 1980s during the Reagan administration, I really got discouraged about my inability to wake up conservatives to the fact that these people were lying to you. I was very discouraged that a good portion of the conservative congressmen in the United States had mistresses. I mean, they But you were planting the seeds with others, but take credit for what's now happening today. Well... I don't know whether I started it or not, but I'll tell you, I really sounded the no compromise warning. I talked about rhino Republicans, Republicans in name only, how we were being betrayed. And I'll tell you, it's taken 30 years, and all of a sudden, the conservatives have woken up, and this anti-establishment fever has just blossomed. And so that's why we're seeing this major media manipulation to actually dampen they're actually removing the content from the internet so that you don't see the wave of resistance. We're now seeing Chinese communist level censorship here openly in our face. Absolutely. And what Glenn Beck did was just unconscionable, um, you know, to basically pander to, uh, to Zuckerberg. And this is typical of somebody, in fact, sadly to say, even Donald Trump has a little bit of this weakness. He can be flattered, and if you flatter him, he turns around and ingratiates himself to you and says nice things. The other day, he said wonderful things about Dick Cheney, who's, you know, the Darth Vader. No, I agree. I, at least he's remember Kissinger. He's starting to do some scary stuff. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm really worried about this. But, you know, Glenn Beck comes, um, you know, from an entertainment background, an alcoholic background. He's basically bending over backwards to gain uh, favor in the establishment. He was a hardcore liberal celebrating abortion just 15 years ago. Well, that's right. Now, to his credit, I, I, I think Glenn Beck and my uncle W. Cleon Skousen was his mentor. Uh, he really did read all his constitutional doctrines, and you know, he converted to uh, Mormon Christianity. And but he also absorbed one of the weaknesses of public, of Mormons who are, are high-profile public officials. You know, they're embarrassed about their refugee background, their persecution background, so they've been bending over backwards trying to please the establishment. And we see this with Glenn Beck. We see this with Orange. Sure, Hatch. but America's background is a refugee background. This is just a repeat uh, of the truth of what's happened in this country. It is, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, Mormons have a particular persecution complex, and they're desperately trying to gain acceptance in the world, and that's a problem politically. Now, I don't mean... Mormons like myself who are hardcore conservative constitutionalists who know what's going on, who understand the conspiracy. I'm talking about mainstream conservative Mormons, uh, you know, who basically think they can have it both ways. They can play up to the establishment and say nice things about them and be rewarded. And they are rewarded with good press and big articles in U.S. News and World Report praising the church. But it's a trap, Alex. It's a trap in many... Well, Christian sure. I mean, I mean, you talk about the Catholic Church's background, but clearly now they blackmailed it with a pedophile infiltration, took it over. Now the media doesn't talk about it going on. It's worse than ever. And we've got the Pope openly bad-mouthing Christianity in Europe. I want to talk about it when we come back because, you know, I mean, moving away from Glenn Beck and media control, I want to finish, you know, more of that. And, and the SEC wanting to censor the web and just, I mean, it's here. Beck was, uh, you know, out there pushing it. But Drudge was told last year by a Supreme Court justice, it's coming in 2016, get ready. It's here. But I want to shift gears into the Pope saying, you know, we don't want to talk about Europe's Christian roots and Jesus was like ISIS. I mean, these are real quotes. It's this uncloaking. Why are they doing it? With Joel Scowls and WorldAffairsBrief.com straight ahead, I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. This is an incredible time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen, and your voice more than ever needs to be heard against this world government. I want to give you two examples of victory and then we're going right back to Joel Scowls. And I give this example all the time because it's it's one of many, but it's one that everybody knows about and you can confirm for yourself. It's like tens of thousands of secret tests, hundreds of them, you know, lethal, thousands killed. Everybody knows about Tuskegee and the government, you know, helping inject and spread syphilis for 40 something years in black people. Super evil. It's a eugenics experiment. 
So I use that example as something evil because folks should know about it. What's the tip of the iceberg? What about 30 years ago, you couldn't find organic food anywhere, but as people created the market, now it's displacing the toxic food and taking over. You took action. And that's why they want to get rid of the free market is because they know with our choices, we can circumvent all their propaganda if we just wake up to the trance. Wake up to the fact that we're not being sold these ideas for our best interest. And it's the same thing with what we see with Internet censorship. If we get upset about it and say it's wrong, they're not going to get away with it. Just like with the Second Amendment, people know the facts, they know the statistics, they know the history, they don't believe a word out of the system, they know there's a formula to get our guns. So it's one of the few places we're having a victory. Just like statistically, we're winning the abortion fight, because the facts are on our side. And because we know the enemy is lying. We don't compromise. Well, it's the same thing on politics. They tell us compromise all day long, but they're not compromising with us because they have a will to dominate and control. They want dumb slaves. They don't want free will. Oh, the whole popular culture sells the idea that the devil's going to give you all this freedom. The devil turns you into a slave. Whether you believe the devil or not, that archetype. And so if we're no compromise with Agenda 21 and everything they're doing, it's game over. When we realize it's bad. It doesn't help us. It's evil. Now, going back to Joel Skousen, our guest, Joel, you were finishing up with the, I mean, like you said, I, I mean, I meant to say that the, when I came on today, I was driving here and I thought, this is Chinese-style censorship. It's begun. They're doing it. We get censored, sometimes suspended for three days, saying, do this again, you'll be banned. We put it out, and no one even thinks it's a big deal. Screenshots of Facebook saying, we're going to ban you if you, you know, expose Benghazi. It's not pornography, it's not racist stuff, it's nothing. Again, Europe arresting Germans that criticize open borders. Uh, France, you know, indicting uh, Marie Le Pen for saying Islam's a greater threat, is a greater threat as the Nazis to our sovereignty. Well, it's true. So you see that th this group is allied with anything evil, even though it undermines their own temporal power. The Pope coming out, calling for world government, uh, bad mouthing Christianity. In a major Catholic newspaper saying, we don't want Christian roots. Islam, we need to interbreed. And, and Jesus was like ISIS, sending out his flocks. I mean, this is blasphemy. And it, it, uh, what is the technique? I mean, you're an expert at this. I really respect you. What are they trying, it, what are they trying to do here? Well, first, there's the technique of suppression. For example, news aggregators like Yahoo or like uh, Facebook or Google will purposely filter the news so that you don't ever get, for example, any news stories about people using concealed weapons to protect themselves and their families. That's right. You just never get it. There are thousands of those that happen each month, and we never hear those stories. That's direct suppression. Google, for example, will promote every single anti- um, or every so-called success of a new medical protocol drug, and they will denigrate any news about this anti-vaccine or that's pro-health or uh, herbal remedies. They will denigrate all of that, and I've tracked it. It's just incredibly pernicious. And so for Glenn Beck to come away and say, oh, these are just honest people because he looked at me in the eye, talking about Mark Zuckerberg. And when you look at Breitbart's uh, cataloging the 10 areas in which Facebook deliberately manipulated the news and their staff, in, including, um, about the news, you find that the engagement percentages, and that means in Facebook, when you have likes and things and you post things and they get your, your news feeds or your RSS. They just block it. They just block it. They've had the anti-immigration group um, had a 93% drop in engagement, even though they went up about 13% in numbers of likes. That's Absolutely. Look, look, look. He meets with the communist Chinese to organize it. He admits it. He tells Merkel on stage, I'm going to censor Germans. They, they're hiring former Stasi to run the roundup gangs of the police. You cannot make up the naked, tyrannical takeover that Drudge was warned of last year. And I mean, Drudge was almost shaking when he was here. I mean, they've said, shut up or we're going to come after you and basically arrest you. I hope people understand the level that we've reached here. They are so close, Joel. 
They are indeed. And, uh, you know, this isn't something that, you know, we've had a few whistleblowers out of Facebook that have testified that they've been manipulating things, including the, the big thing about the staff crossing out Black Lives Matter and, and putting in all lives matter. And how Zuckerberg got after them. They kept erasing it and they kept putting it back up on the board and he threatened them. I mean, yeah, I can't shows, say all lives matter. Which is just ridiculous. And why not leave that up? I mean, it includes black lives. But clearly there's a leftist liberal agenda behind that. And for Glenn Beck to walk that away and say, this is nothing. I trust him. He looked me in the eye. That's so superficial. He was looking for... Oh, Zuckerberg's a, quote, good liberal, not a progressive. These are good people that have put Obama in and now want Hillary in. It's, it's ridiculous. It's the How does he think he won't get in trouble for that? I just It's, it's so brazen. Well, in fact, they do buy time, uh, you know, by giving in to the establishment. But, you know, they're called by Lenin and the establishment useful idiots. These people will be the first ones sacrificed, the first ones to go because they are not building respect. That There's no two-way street back and forth for flattery. The same thing with Donald Trump. They'll take his flattery, but they're working to knife him in the back because they don't trust him, the fact that he could change his mind and he isn't a controlled candidate. So they tried to destroy him, and now that they couldn't, now they're cozying up. Now they're co-opting him, and that's what the meeting of Kissinger was all about, the the 10 or so meetings, at, uh, telephone meetings. That I've had. had them try to get me to meet with Kissinger. I have a witness, John Harmon, heard it all with Rothkopf, the head of the Kissinger group at the time, said, come up here, meet with us, work with us. I mean, it's just sick. Am I supposed to just basically, you know, just grovel to these people? You know, the thing that I don't know, I was listening to James Corbett talking about the, uh, and he's a good guy. Uh, he really does work against the establishment and the globalist uh, conspiracy. But, you know, he was giving a litany of the problems with Henry Kissinger and the awards that they gave him. And he missed the big one, the big one, which is a proof of conspiracy. That's the 2009 Munich Security Conference where they gave an international award to Henry Kissinger. And the next day, Obama's national security advisor, former commandant of the Marine Corps, James Jones, got, gets up and say, you know, we take our daily marching orders at the NSA from Henry Kissinger and his associates passed down through Brent Scrocroft or Sandy Berger. That's a legitimate, uh, an illegitimate exposure to the fact you have someone not involved in government giving daily orders. He didn't say Absolutely. Well, stay there, Joel. I want to ask you to come back. We've reached the moment where they admit world governments here, corporate above the law. Do we get more credibility now that we were right? Or, or I mean, what's the next phase? What do you expect to come next? I want to get to the open borders in Europe, what's happening here, the economy, what's happening to the White House, and so much more with Joel Skousen. Stay with us. Briefly, um, we are running a special that ends tonight. But if you get the promo code tonight, you can use it tomorrow. If you sign up for the free newsletter, key articles, key videos, it's just great with the censorship that's increasing that we have emails. I never really promoted this till I was told by all the tech experts, hey, you need to go back to low-tech tech. Because stuff's getting bad, even when they shut down the web with an internet kill switch, which they now admit they have. We were talking about that 10 years ago, but now it's called Obama's kill switch. We'll still be able to reach people via email to a certain extent of these networks. So everybody that's an info warrior needs to create an email or whatever, infowars.com forward slash newsletter. It's great to go sign up for some of the free news alerts at the uh, publication of Joel Skousen, worldaffairsbrief.com. I mean, they want to shut this down, so the answer is resist it. Spread the video, spread the articles. They can block us in algorithms and not let people share it, but you can get around that. And, and as HUMET increases, as human intelligence understands this, we can beat the algorithms every time if we don't respond to the algorithm, but if we organically take action. See, they don't want it to be top news or breaking news now, it's trends. You know, how to teach your seven-year-old to give oral sex. How to teach your 10-year-old that they're a tranny. Jacking with kids, folks. This is mainlining of pedophilia, which is what these Satanists want, is to get in there and destroy the youth before they develop. Turn them into slaves early. This is psychological warfare. So w w every day we send out a special 10, 20, 30% off one of the great items, whether it's non-GMO, heirloom seeds, and InfoWarsStore.com, whether it be some nutraceutical like X2 that's 20% off right now for everybody. But we're doing a special we've never before done. That is on the Hillary for President shirt that's so viral and a come and take it shirt. 50% off, infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Put your email in. We will send you the promo code one more time tonight. I've been doing it since Friday. And you will get the shirt for half off.
the shirts cost us like six and a half dollars to print up. Then after shipping and everything else, what we do, we're, we're really not making any money on this. It's not about money. I'm not ashamed to make money. I need to have money to be strong and in their face. But the point is, is that it's a win-win. We get to be in contact with you. We get to get around the censorship and send you a promo code for 50% off. And you'll get all the other promo codes that are coming through on a daily basis. But this is one of the biggest ever or the biggest ever on T-shirts. 50% off. And the good news is these are being produced and printed here in America. So we sold out of this on Friday. But the, the, the factory on the East Coast is making them. They're going to be here in a week. So it's, it's basically not back-ordered. Infowarsstore.com. And you just, you'll, you'll get the promo code in your email at checkout to get 50% off. There's a lot of other specials as well. All right, Joel Scalzi, getting back to you. I want to cover the waterfront now in the time we have left. First off, let me ask you, what is on your radar screen that I haven't brought up? Then I want to get into why they're flooding Europe, why they're so arrogant, where all this is going. What is the real alliance with Islam? Is it a triple cross? Where is it going? Uh, what talk about Alex is... Something very, very disturbing that happened, I reported on it in the World Affairs Brief, and that is <clears throat> it's getting very active. You know, they sense this revolution against the establishment that's happening, and what that revolution really is, as I said, is against the deceptive establishment, the deception of we are conservatives, we are Republicans. It's we a are loss of confidence in the system and the, and the realization it's a synthetic false paradigm. That's exactly right. Now, what they're moving on to next is to shut down dissent but they're not moving to FEMA camps or prison camps. That doesn't happen, can't happen till war comes when you can justify that kind of draconian... But electronic what, gulags that Drudge talks about where you're just controlled. Well, what they're trying to do, I think, is use... Um, and what happened in Washington, D.C. at a giant store is that a security guard, a woman security guard, physically removed a male who would not leave a female bathroom and got arrested by D.C. police. Now, what a chilling message this sends to law enforcement, that if you, you cannot even question a man in a dressing room. That's right. Shower. Mentally ill men can come in and loiter and obsess. There's a whole subculture of this. And, and, and no one has any power to do anything because we're, we're giving sexual perversion a godlike special status. That's right. We've given anti-discrimination status to perversion. And I think transgenderism is more or less a perversion. And the important thing here is, remember, we are the vast majority who doesn't buy into transgenders. And by an even optimistic estimates, they're 0.002% of the population. And yet the media is putting out uh, such a campaign and this uh, uh, police arresting a security guard for upholding and doing her duty sends a chilling effect so that nobody dares speak out against us. And then you add to this hate speech thing. Um, you know, where, and that re goes into the Muslim immigration thing. You know, they're basically trying to have a war on Western culture and a war on Western conservative voting values by flooding Europe and the United States with illegal aliens and, and Muslims. And, of course, the message is you are intolerant, you are racist, and you are hateful if you don't accept... So they're attempting to break our back by tripling down. I think it's going to backfire. I agree with you that we're five, six years off from their big war, but... The best laid plans of mice and men often go astray because of liberty rising. I think it accelerates their timetable into an explosive paradigm. Well, I think you have to remember, Alex, though, that they have to build a philosophy among the common people of fear that you don't stand up for these extreme agendas. You don't stand up. They're going to label everything that we believe in, including constitutionalism, as extreme. There's a huge Washington Post article out saying the threat to liberty is the constitutionalist. We've got to arrest them all. And what happens, though, is when war comes and when you're in a globalist conflict and our leaders come out of their bunkers and say, look, there's these constitutional, these conspiracists in our, our world that aren't supporting our troops to think that we are involved in it, that we were responsible for bringing this war upon you. We need to lock these people up just like we had to lock up the Japanese. And if you provide the sufficient psychological environment for the American people to be embarrassed don't dare stand out and don't dare say what you think about transgenders. And there's hardly a single person. Look at Governor McGrory of North Carolina. Sure, sure. They picked the most radical, wild thing. And now they're going to put boys and girls showers in the sixth grade just to see what we won't put up with. It's, it's a total assault. But when Governor McGrory in North Carolina refused... It went along with this transgender, I'm sympathetic to the... Instead of saying, what transgenders? Where's the evidence? 
how do you scientifically show whether... Well, it's person- about going into schools and telling kids you're transgender. It's about sexual contact with the state and your children. So as I say, I'm not very optimistic about where this is going, Alex. And, you know, that's why I wrote the book Strategic Relocation. I think while we fight this battle, and this is the time to fight it, when there's this, this mass wave of resistance building. But I'll tell you, eh, they look like they're co-opting uh, Donald Trump. And uh, if we aren't able to get a major change in 2016, we're going to lose the Supreme Court. We could have maybe three to four justices. No, I agree. And they are ready to start persecuting us. So people need to prepare for a takedown. They need to prepare for war. They need to prepare for losing as well as we prepare to fight. I mean, both are important because if you fight right up to the end and you have made no preparations to flee the cities, when it no, all I totally happens. agree, sir. You're absolutely on target. You, you, you are. I'm not just saying this to any guys. You are, the, I think, the most knowledgeable person out there on full spectrum. Uh, you know what the enemy's doing. You're right. Everything they do is about making us dependent, servile, and stupid. We've got to get in shape. We got to get focused on God. We got to get prepared. We got to meet people we trust. And we got to get ready because the enemy wants us dependent. That's their number one weapon. Alex, that's right. This spirit of evil, though, Joel, I mean, let's talk about what this spirit. I mean, the more I study it, these people really are out to get us. I mean, they are so horrible. How do they get their minions to follow this? I, I just don't understand it. Well, you know, they do use predictable people. I mean, Facebook doesn't hire conspirators who knowingly operate under that. A few of the people, the programmers, have to be in on it that we're conspiring to do that. Same way the certain... And they warn us. But you see, they use predictable, stupid idiots. People like Glenn Beck, who can be talked in to denying conspiracy, even though he gets close to it. He got close to it to Fox, he pursuing George Soros. He got close to globalism, and he got close to it on his show again, and they keep shutting him down, but he will never repent and realize that unless you talk about the conspiracy, it doesn't matter whether you're Glenn Beck or Fox News, you do nothing. But Joel, as you said, the conspiracy is now, we're going to break here in just a moment, uh, the conspiracy is now completely out in the open. I want to ask you that in the final segment. This weird paradigm where they keep denying it's going on, but it's everywhere. Infowars.com. Stay with us. At the NRA National Convention, first time they've endorsed a political candidate before they get the main nomination. And I, I think Donald Trump's for real overall. I think the fact that uh, he's meeting with globalists is an attempt to beat Hillary. Um, I even know Roger Stone's concerned about it. He said that on air and he's good friends with Donald Trump. But I guess Donald Trump thinks he knows what he's doing. I know this. They're scared of him for real. Even more scared of him than they were of Reagan. I know Joel Skousen knew Reagan and was one of the top conservatives back at that time. But uh, I wanted to mention something. Patriots want to lose. Or, or there's this meme that we're not ever supposed to influence things and take back control. And I agree. We should try to defend liberty, take the country back, take the world back, but also prepare you know, a backup. But, you know, there's a commenter here, because here it is, exclusive behind the scenes of the NRA annual meeting. InfoWars speaks with gun rights activists rallying to protect Constitution. And there's an Anon saying, now InfoWars is pumping up the NRA. What happened to the criticisms that this gun organization has compromised our gun rights numerous times that the gun owners of America was a better alternative? I just don't get this place anymore. Well, I see, there's this attitude of holier than thou, judge everyone. When I've been 100% clear every time Larry Pratt's on the show. That gun owners made the NRA honest again. And I've had new uh, you, 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 people on like the uh, Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent, who's on the board saying, thank God for gun owners keeping them honest. We've reformed the NRA, made them hardcore, kicked the bad members off, and it's doing a good job overall now. We got the members to take action. And then once they start steering back the right direction, 90%, we then praise the good behavior. So I've been totally clear about that. So I'm bad having gun owners on every month. I'm bad because I'm saying, oh, look, the NRA is not promoting the Second Amendment. Again, we have to get past this, this craziness. Uh, Joel Scalzo, we got nine minutes left, seven minutes left. I really appreciate you from World Affairs Brief.com, editor in chief over there. Um,
other other points you want to get into, other big issues you're looking at. Look at Venezuela, $170 hamburgers, they're reporting in AFP. Why are these Bernie idiots running around? I mean, I agree with you. The big negative news is 55% of people under the age of 30 say they, they, don't, they want socialism. As they sit here in the lap of luxury compared to socialist countries, they're just so ignorant. They're so soft. How do we get past this paradox of even limited li liberty, limited discovery of the Renaissance and God's promise makes the grandkids of those that did it so decadent and slob-like they believe any lie they are told. I mean, isn't that the problem with liberty is it ends up producing totally spoiled, rotten children? Well, that's part of the problem. One of the main problems, though, is that the faults of socialism can always be blamed on the, the lack of performance on the free market. In other words, we're having to respond. They blame all of these business cycles on the free market, but they're not the free market. They're the intervention of a fiat money supply in the economy. And, you know, oftentimes the victims of socialist policy are hidden. The benefits are public. And so the people buy into the benefits, but they never see the hidden victims. They never see the, the businessmen on the margin who cannot afford now to hire any youth because of a minimum wage of $15 an hour. And that's going to happen in the millions as those things are passed. And so you see capitalism and the free markets always get the, the bad press because they can easily be bl blamed. The hidden victims of socialism are never visible in the press, of course, who could reveal it, never will, because they are part of the conspiracy to make socialism look good. Ultimately, it's just the breakdown of the fact that you can never pay for it. In other words, it's an unstoppable attraction to get more than what your true worth allows in, under socialism, and there's no way to eventually pay for that. Remember 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when socialism had these collapses in Europe and they had to reform under Thatcher, and even Norway had to cut their benefits, Sweden had to cut, and now they're reaching the breaking point again. And of course, Muslim integration has helped that. Uh, you know, sure, why is the left so in love with Islam and radical Islam? It worships it. It just. He complains about the West empowering women, and and then it just runs around his, you know, hysterically supporting guys that are like stereotypes, like the Imam of Jerusalem going black ruga, black vela, your women will be ours, black ruga. I mean, it's like a cartoon. I mean, what is this death wish? I think it's it's on two levels, Alex. First of all, there are the globalists that are running the the wars, creating the Muslim refugees pointed into Europe, not shutting down sure. the, with sting operations as they could in, in the Mexican border or on the Turkish coast. You could send in any number of agents posing as refugees and arrest every boat owner immediately. Every coyote at the border who offered to take you across, arrest them immediately. It would shut it down in a month. But they don't do it because they don't want to. Now, there's an entire cadre. Uh, you know, journalism is really a whoring community. They are yes men to their own establishment. They were hired because they're unthinking liberals. And, and I say unthinking, they may have good hearts. I'm By the way, that. did you see the former uh, uh, USA Today uh, editor uh, coming out, Richard uh, Benedito, saying, look, we get in these meetings and people are happy groveling to lie and to do whatever Obama says. Have you seen that article? Yeah, and they are. They grovel at that. I mean, what I'm saying is you have so many people who are so anxious to please the establishment, please the media, please their school teachers, please their education establishment, that the, when you get a wave of movement, a psychological movement that says transgenders are untouchable, you've got to praise transgenders, they just jump right on the bandwagon. There's no conspiracy involved. It's just psychological. And that's an Overton window. If they can let the government sexualize our children in the fifth grade, then the sky's the limit. That's right, and they're not through. They're going to shut down opposition so that no one can say nay without being accused of hate speech and locked up, and they can do that before war. That's where we're headed. And it's sure, so the answer is everybody use their free speech now. Promote links, the World Affairs Brief, Infowars.com, Drudge. Tell the truth. Do your own media, your own local shows. Uh, just get involved and just try to absolutely point out that free speech is vital and precious and that you just can't take Infowars or World Affairs Brief or whatever for granted. You know, it's just like two crucial issues I covered in the World Affairs Brief this last time. I had to give people the, 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 the philosophical ammunition so that they can go up against transgender, so they can go up against civil rights and anti-discrimination laws. First of all, I said, you know, you've got to understand what a true definition of fundamental right is. If you're going to go up and say, what's wrong with 
giving anti-discrimination rights, whether it's race. Sure, my children have a right to not have the school teach them how to have sex when they're five years old. Yeah, and you've got to understand how to define those rights. And I do it in the World Affairs Brief. Your listeners can get a free copy by just emailing me at editor at worldaffairsbrief.com. But I also talked about why the transgender thing is bogus, and you've got to stand up against it. You can't just kowtow and say, oh, yes, everybody deserves to be respected. And even I kowtow, because I don't hate people individually for whatever they've been raised and brainwashed by the system. I don't hate people individually, but the agenda is anti-family, anti-human. But, but I get it. I should just say absolutely not, because even being friendly somehow just empowers the whole deal. Because we're being raped with this. We're being force-fed this. I mean, there's just no way I would tolerate transgender claims, because there's no way for anyone to justify scientifically a transgender claim. Maybe you look at Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner. Now I mean, Bruce Jenner wants to go back to being a man. He only still has sex with women, and that means he hasn't had, he's had a boob operation, but he has not had a genital operation. And that's just despicable. Just like body him. modification where you have horns put on yourself. It doesn't really mean you're a lizard. That's right. And as I've quoted in the World Affairs Brief, there's a professor, John Hopkins, that says all of this transgender stuff is bogus. They are still males in DNA, in hormones, in all of the aspects of the body where male and female differ, and you cannot change that. Sure. In closing, what is the main agenda behind this? I mean, obviously, in the family, make the state God. That destroys the human family, so this is an anti-human agenda. Well, the agenda is to, first of all, silence everyone in opposition so that when the wave of propaganda, and that's why people have to get out of the public schools, that's going to be the focus of propaganda. I don't care how painful it is. How much it costs or how much you have to do to do homeschooling, you have got to get your kids out of public schools because that's where the impact is going to be. That's where your The educations are worthless. We need to bring, even if it's secret, uh, we, we need to bring uh, apprenticeships back. That's where kids are going to learn how to be men and women. Joel Skousen, worldaffairsbrief.com. I want to get you back up in the next week. I mean, it's such incredible things are happening. I want to talk geopolitics more. Uh, hopefully you can come up this week, okay? Yes, I could be pleased to do that. I want to talk you. to you right now at the end of the show and set that up the next few days. Big guests coming up this week and more, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central, Infowars.com. They're trying to shut this down, folks. Promote it because this sunlight is hurting these vampires.